Good morning. This is Tad again. Uh, this is day one, chapter one, uh, and I titled it Course Objectives, but really it's it's the important stuff. Now, I want to apologize. These first two days um, aren't going to coordinate very well with the book. It, things will get better in, in day three and day four, but bear with me. Uh, so really important stuff. There are four things that I've built this course around. Um, a specific audit objective. These are four definitions. We'll go over them briefly today. Uh, the unmodified audit report and management assertions. So those three things are going to be on the first test. Those are foundational that we're going to uh, use throughout the entire quarter. Uh, and then the audit risk model will come in after the first test. So those are the four concepts that I've tried to build this course around. Okay, uh, the audit objectives, those definitions are on the handout that I gave you. A lot of the information on the audit reports is on that handout that I gave you. The management assertions are page 166. On the handout, uh, there, there are some new words. Uh, Financial reporting framework, sometimes that's used instead of GAAP. Instead of saying general accepted accounting principles, uh, they'll say financial reporting framework, and that way it can apply either to general accepted accounting principles or international financial reporting standards, either way. The next paragraph, management's responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of financial statements accordance with general extent, generally accepted accounting principles, and management's responsible for the design, implementation, and maintenance of internal control relevant to the preparation and fair presentation of financial statements that are free of material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. A couple things there. So that's not terribly important for this class. It's absolutely essential that you understand management is responsible for the financial statements. The auditor is not responsible for the financial statements. Management is responsible. Don't ever let the client shift responsibility to you. Uh, the second thing, the reason I point this out is there are some minor wording changes. And sometimes on the CPA exam, uh, they'll emphasize things that had minor wording changes to see if you've seen the difference. So it used to say management is responsible for the fair presentation of financial statements. Now it says management's responsible for the preparation and fair presentation. Uh, it used to say management is responsible for the design and implementation of internal control. Now it says management's responsible for the design, implementation, and maintenance of internal control. So those are little things that will appear on the CPA exam uh, where one of your answers will be the old answer and one will be the new answer. Uh, uh, last thing before we go on, uh, free a material misstatement whether due to fraud or error. Most of the time, whenever you see the words free and material misstatement, it's followed by whether due to fraud or error. Not 100% of the time, but most of the time. So whenever I see free and material misstatement, I think whether due to fraud or error. That's also a good time to point out something that Ted, what Ted teaches is not 100% correct 100% of the time. Okay. So Ted's trying to get across those concepts that are correct 85 or 90% of the time. Uh, if you need to get over a 90, that's on you. But So it's not 100% true that free of material misstatements always follow by whether due to fraud or error, but almost all, all of the time. Okay, so we've got 200, 315, 500, and 700. Uh, those are definitions that you will want to learn word for word. Go ahead and complain about the memorization if you want. Uh, but these four audit objectives are going to flow through the entire course, so you might as well get them down word for word or real close to word for word. 
And then there's our definition of independence. Actually, it is objectivity and independence, but the way I teach it, we're going to pretend this is the definition for independence. Now, there's a bunch of definitions on the handout. You don't need to memorize all these for the first test. Uh, some you won't memorize at all in the quarter. But I've tried to color code them. So the green, if they're color coded green, you memorize them for test one. If they're purple, then you want to be familiar with the term for test one. And then the yellow are important terms that we'll learn throughout the quarter. So that's just a, make sure you know the green stuff for test one. Make sure you're familiar with the purple stuff for test one. In the handout, there's a whole bunch of independent of auditors reports. Uh, the you want to focus on the standard unmodified opinion and learn what's in it. If you think about what it says, then it will make sense when you need to modify your opinion. When the, the terms in the standard unmodified opinion are not correct, are not true, then you're going to have to change your opinion. So here's a list of all the, the reports that are shown at the end of the, the hand day one handout. And we'll, we'll get to that. That's the day four. We'll go through it in great depth. Now I'm going to try and sell. So here's the basic standard unmodified report it has four sections. The opinion, the basis for the opinion, the responsibilities of management, and the auditor's responsibility. So those are the four sections in the standard unmodified opinion. Sometimes we add an emphasis of matter paragraph below the basis for opinion section. Uh, I use the word paragraph. I should use the word section. So sometimes we add an emphasis of not always, but sometimes we add that, that emphasis of matter section to our report. The order in which they appear is important. Now, I'm going to try and sell something here. I'm going to start selling this. So, yeah, there's a bunch of memorization, but I hope by the end of the quarter you say, oh, I understand why he had us memorize the stuff he had us memorize. So the, the first term is general accepted accounting principles. Now they use the term in accordance with accounting principles generally accepted in the United States. Okay, so generally accepted accounting principles, that's a big term. Then we've got general accepted auditing standards, GAAP and GAS. Don't get them backwards. Okay, so we've got general accepted accounting principles and generally accepted auditing standards. Again, they've changed the wording a little bit. Auditing standards generally accepted in the United States. Okay, that at the bottom, you've got sufficient appropriate evidence, sufficient appropriate evidence um, that ties together nicely with audit objective 500. Uh, but that's a big, huge concept. Well, think about it. If you don't have sufficient appropriate evidence, can you express an opinion? Then we've already talked about management's responsibility. And then underneath there, there's a little term going concern, going concern. You'll need to be familiar with that for the first test. Uh, that comes up when we do the audit reports in Chapter 3. Then you'll notice the auditor's responsibility section starts out almost the same as Audit Objective 200. Our objectives are obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free of material misstatements, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion. Okay, so that's almost the same as Audit Objective 200, which makes sense. I mean, this is auditor's responsibility, auditor's objective. But the reason I point that out is, Ted has a limited memory. Uh, Ted has a lot of limitations of stage of life, but my memory's not near as good as yours. So I may not be able to memorize everything. So I'm going to learn either 200 or 
this first sentence and the auditor's responsibility. And I'm going to use them interchangeably. Am I going to get full credit all the time? Uh, probably not, but I'm going to get most of the credit, right? Because 200 and this first sentence are very similar. Then we've got the definition of reasonable assurance. Reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance, but not an absolute level of assurance. Okay. Um, reasonable assurance is a high, but not absolute level of assurance. Okay. So there's a definition in there. Now go back to the bottom here. There's another definition. Mistakes, misstatements are considered material if individually or in aggregate, they could reasonably ex be expected to influence the economic decisions of users made on the basis of these financial statements. So there we have two definitions, two important definitions, now, reasonable assurance, and materiality are defined in auditor's responsibility. Well, there's a whole bunch in there, isn't there? So effectively, there's audit objective 200, there's the definition of reasonable assurance, and there's the definition of material misstatement. So again, I'm trying to sell the fact that, wait a minute, these things all intertie. If I learn the right things, the right definitions, I can use them over and over and over again. Then we have another important concept that's going to creep in during this first test, professional skepticism. Now, for the, the first test, we're only going to learn the, the six assertions, uh, the management assertions, the, the six in the upper right-hand corner here. So we've got a column for transactions. We've got a column for balances. Uh, we're going to learn occurrence, completeness, and accuracy for transaction. We're going to learn existence, completeness, and accuracy evaluation and allocation for balances. So we're just going to learn those six, but we're going to learn them really well. Okay. Now, again, uh, we've got required meetings. Uh, if you're in the morning section, you're going to meet from 10 to 11. On Tuesday, if your last name begins with A through K. A Thursday, if your last name begins L through Z. If you're in the afternoon section, we're going to meet from 1210 to 110. On Tuesday, if your last name begins A through L. And Thursday, if your last name begins M through Z. I have office hours immediately before and immediately following my class. And from 9 to 9.30, if you want to talk something confidentially, uh, I'll be available. You can set up an appointment for that. Thank you, and I'll see you again pretty soon.